All right, I want to try to give an idea of quantum mechanics here that uh, that'll you know is meant to be simplified and, and easier to understand and sort of gather some of the things we know and shed some of the things that are just uh, paradoxes that we have found. Now the paradoxes are important, but to me, I believe that when you find a paradox in material philosophy and natural philosophy, it means you don't understand. So you don't want to forget that there's a paradox there because it means you don't understand. But you have to back off from that. You can't reassert always the paradox as if the paradox is a part of nature, right? So I have faith that we'll be able to unify uh, our, our physics and, and eliminate the paradoxes between, for example, particle wave duality. So let's back up to what we really know and what really led to this idea. And the electron is a crucial, crucial thing because in the history of quantum mechanics, one of the most important things to quantum mechanics that generated the ideas and the models that, that, that then became uh, asserted as material reality um, in quantum mechanics uh, was trying to model the atom. How does an electron get caught by a proton? Right? Um, because if it's a little tiny planet-like thing circling around something like a sun, the, the, the uh, nucleus, um, then there's problems with that because what are the chances that it would exactly be trapped and and why doesn't the orbit decay? Because the electron is negatively charged and it's going in a circle and the circle is a kind of acceleration changing its direction. It should emit photons and it should crash into the proton that's in the nucleus or whatever's in the nucleus and um, it doesn't. That was Bohr's first model, the so-called planetary model they still like to teach, not because it's an apt metaphor but because people find it accessible. All right, back off a little bit. Let's think about what does it mean to say something is a particle and something is a wave, both. Well, we were just saying that our models for each of those things apply in certain circumstances. And there are things besides waves um, that will have a wave mathematics to them. Basically, things that are distributed in a medium that oscillate. Um, because the wave mathematics is a lot about oscillation. Whether the wave is traveling through and kind of carrying the oscillation from one place to another, or whether it's a soap bubble going wah, 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 wah. And so with the soap bubble, you have something, for example, that can behave as a particle and a wave. Um, the whole soap bubble is going and can bump against you like a particle and pop on your face, say. Or it, uh, you can look at the surface and yeah, it's, it's oscillating like that. And it's going to be doing that with resonant frequencies and you can use math, wave mathematics and model that oscillation as a wave uh, traveling around in the bubble. Okay, so let's take an electron and think of what can we model at. It's not a little BB because it has these just wave-like things that have to do with oscillation and distribution over space, but it's also not really a wave because it's localized. You don't have a wave, like a slice of a wave doesn't hit the shore, the whole wave comes. So the, the similarity in the mathematics can be explained just by the fact that the electron then is distributed um, but also localized. So it's distributed but you know, it, it, the most of its energy is in a particular space, and it has a, a local a phenomena associated with it. So I picture the electron as a little tiny bit of a lightning bolt, like a little tiny bit of lightning, which is apt because, you know, isn't that what's traveling in a lightning bolt? I should check that. I'm pretty sure it's not protons. There might be both, but it's, it's electricity, right? So... If you see the, the electron as a little lightning bolt, it's distributed, and when it's traveling along, you know, propagating, um, then it's like a little thread of lightning. But you can imagine a thread of lightning also being into a sheet or a bubble, right? Now the bubble aspect is where quantum mechanics comes from, because they found that, okay, you can't really model, mathematically it doesn't work out, to model the electron is a little tiny planet going around the, the nucleus. What it's more like is the electron comes around and when it's captured by that proton, 
because it's a little lightning bolt, it gets spread out. And its tendency to, to orbit the nucleus is uh, helped out, basically, by the fact that this thing can spread out into a sheet. And it spreads out into a sheet, equidistant around the, the nucleus, in the simplest case, in a little sphere. And it is a little bubble. So the single electron becomes like a little bubble. And why is it wave-like? Well, it's pulsing. And that can be modeled as waves going around its surface. But you can also think of it as a little sheet of electricity, a little bubble of electricity. And the imagine when uh, a bubble is, is burst. Let's say it was a, a, a paper balloon, so shaped like a bubble. You know, of course, you can imagine that becoming like a sheet or getting rolled up and being like a little bolt. So imagine the uh, electron like this. And the issue with the electron is that there's a lot of things that can perturb it. It's a magnetic bubble. So when magnets come around, it can be deformed and things like this. Okay, uh, so this bubble is in some sense one thing, but it's also distributed over space. So you can see this part versus that part, and it, you know, so that there's something there to, to be deformed. It has a form uh, over space. All right, now the amazing thing about these bubble patterns that go around the nucleus is now if they're higher energy, they change other shapes and this again is because they're magnetic and because of various properties so they can become kind of kinked like one bubble but with two nodes and then you know with the nucleus in the middle and there could be one like this and one like this and one like this now a, we now a weird thing who knows why of these bubbles is that an electron can join with one other electron to make the same shape bubble but a little thicker and complete now when an atom goes along with this bubble hanging around if it just has one electron and another one with just one electron they can touch and like two bubbles they can join but what is happening is that the electron as a bubble as a pulsing energy joins with the other one and they make a complete set of one of these shapes of um, of these uh, electron bubbles now if it was a planetary planetary orbit model what you have at this point is that the electron is orbiting in a figure eight or something around all the connected atoms. They're shared, these electrons. On the other hand, the way the mathematics really works out is that it's like this bubble becomes more and more diffuse and bigger. And it might have all these nodes. And in the center of each node of the bubble, in some sense, is the nucleus. Okay. Now these lobes can be you know this figure eight thing to begin with and that's just a weird shaped bubble that can happen that can happen because you know this charged particle and how the mathematics works out now if you have a bunch of these nodes I'll probably put some pictures in if it comes close to another atom th because they're electrical they can be like if the atom is an ion they can be pulled because they're negative and the ion is positive say and they can be pulled in that direction and if they can connect with the other little nodes, they can connect together, and this is a covalent bond. And it does some interesting things, you know, like in diamond or quartz, when you have a whole perfect quartz crystal, that's actually a single molecule, because the atoms are using covalent bonds in that whole thing. And so the electrons are not whizzing around in there, but they're shared in this energy state of, of a diffuse, uh, sheet of electricity joined together with the other diffuse sheets but instead of in the form of a lightning bolt it's sort of in a form of a plasma that holds that thing together now I think we can imagine electrons this way and see how come we come up with this wave like uh, properties things like the two slit experiment are like well geez if it's acting like a wave when it's in the bubble form because of its pulsation what about when it's ripped into its little sheet and lightning bolt form and starts propagating through space, you know, does it still have these oscillation type behaviors? And yes, it does, and that leads to some weird things that lead to things that currently we have to see as a paradox if we're, if we're honest, which is why Feynman says, you know, nobody really understands quantum mechanics. But you can back off of it and just say, well, it, you know, there's certain things are excluded. We don't know what to believe yet, but we know some things not to believe. We can't believe that the electron is some little point particle. It does take up space, in a sense. Uh, you know, even if we have to change our concept of space to accommodate that. And uh, 
And frankly, though I like to call it a wave, it's also not quite wave-like in the way that it's localized. Um, and it makes sense that both of those models, the mathematics of both, work uh, in certain circumstances because they're just getting uh, at different ends of something that, you know, is more complex. It's not a little point source, it's not just a wave. It's a little localized phenomena that's acting like this plasma. And um, so I think, you know, that that's an important part of quantum physics. It also is important for people to realize how widely used quantum physics is. You see, all of our chemistry is understood in terms of these kind of covalent bonds, and that's what makes certain materials radiate certain frequencies of light and how you can make lasers and all the rest. So it's, uh, in a way, it's a very everyday science at this point. We, we use it all the time. And um, it's based on uh, this idea of, of the electron, you know, not orbiting like a particle, but sort of surrounding like a bubble, um, the nucleus of a, of a simple atom at least. And um, so w that is the most practical part of when they say it's super accurate, that's what they're talking about. about. They're talking about modeling the electron this way. Um, and uh, when you get into things like the two-slit experiment, it's not like there's a huge amount of application there. That's the more esoteric part of the theory. However, they have shown that, yes, the electron remains an oscillatory phenomena. And oscillatory phenomena uh, vibrations traveling through space um, behave according to some of the mathematics in wave mechanics. So I think that starts to make sense, right, without really getting into uh, the paradoxical part of our conceptions as things as, you know, one way or another particulate or energy-based and we have this weird fusion we haven't entirely figured out, but I think geometrically we can picture. Atoms have shapes, they're like a set of Legos with a lot of different connectors and in the organic molecules, very much like Legos, they go together in a lot of ways and it has to do with the shape. There is a geometry to it that we don't necessarily talk about a lot that I think uh, is more, you know, it's more amenable to us and our intuition and can can understand a little bit more geometrically than we're going to get by figuring out well why do both of these kinds of abstract mathematics apply in different situations and what are those differences and sorting it out at that level we can also we should do that head to head but we can also back up look at these things as you know things with shape and we don't understand everything but we understand some things about how they behave and then work our way back up and uh, and hopefully see why uh, oh yeah in the case of a bubble if you're talking about the bubble as a system colliding with the face then it looks like a particle if you talk about it as a, a thing in itself then it's got these oscillations on the surface it looks like a wave if the bubble bursts then it ha it's the the remaining surface has these oscillations and you can do all of these things and understand why you have to apply one mathematics at one time and and another at another time and you know subsequent to that maybe figure out a mathematics that unifies them a bit better all right cheers <laughs>